we think of freedom, we don't necessarily think of rules, but actually they sort of go hand in hand. For the majority of us, we feel more comfortable having absorbed, learnt and sort of identified with certain parameters and an understanding of what something is. And through that understanding, we can then be more of ourselves, we're more comfortable, more confident and able to showcase our individuality. Now, when we think of freedom within music making and within Baroque music making, there are all sorts of avenues within which we can explore that as a concept. I will never forget my first rehearsal with the incredible musician and harpsichordist Andrea Marcon. I was rehearsing Vivaldi with him and he refused to allow me to play four notes in time and it felt so discombobulating and it felt so strange and it felt like I was almost faking, like I was trying to be more extrovert than I was, but it didn't take long for my understanding of what was underneath all of that freedom taking to really solidify and it allowed me to take more and more chances. Like in anything, freedom nearly always comes at the possible expense of somebody else. Um, and that can certainly happen if you're in a string quartet and the, and the first violinist says, well, I'm going to be free to play, you know, unrhythmically here. So being free um, comes with huge responsibilities. Um, and I would say that the, the connection between your head and your heart as a musician um, is a really, really important one that will, that can set you free. Literally. And this is where we all have to negotiate and navigate that very difficult relationship between our own freedom, other people's freedom, and how that all works together. There is no better place to be a microcosm for how that works than in an orchestra, in an ensemble, in a group of musicians trying to play together. Because so little is dictated to us from the score, this music allows for a lot of individuality. You can put your own character in, in all Baroque music, I feel. Even in a Bach cantata for me, when I'm, I'm quote, unimportant, because I'm not a singer and I'm not one of the obligato parts, I'm chugging along and having a great time, I feel that m my part is so free that Clifton can be expressed inside that music. And um, that happens in many, many types of music, to be fair. But with, with this particularly, especially Italian, uh, you, can, you can really just let your hair down and go with it and really enjoy it. Improvisation is a key component to Baroque. The gift of this music when it comes to freedom is you have so much strength and routine and repetitiveness and solidity in the core of this music that lives in the bass and in those rhythmic components that allows for a greater sense of experimentation. And that does not just mean for the melody playing the solo part or playing the melodic parts, that goes for every single part of this puzzle being put together. Sometimes the bass stops. And it's not only Vivaldi concertos, there are also sonatas. There are sonatas by Bieber. There's only one long, long, long bass line, and it's all the same note throughout even, you know, four or five bars. Um, there, you can be as free rhythmically as you can, as you dare to be. And the more risks you take, the more it will pay off. Um, because those are, the composer intends you for the music, for the bass line suddenly to stop, and therefore for you to show what you can do.